The question is, could the open source LLM potentially match GPT-4's abilities without additional technical advances? Or is there a secret sauce in GPT-4 unknown to the world that sets it apart from the other models? Am I wasting my time? Tell me. <laughs> All right, so... To the open source versus non-open source models question, you don't want to think about it in, um, in binary black and white terms where like, there is a secret source that will never be rediscovered. What I will say, or whether GPT-4 will ever be reproduced by open source models, perhaps one day it will be. But when it will be, there will be a much more powerful model in the companies. So there will always be a gap between the open source models and the private models. And this gap may even be increasing this time. The amount of effort and engineering and research that it takes to produce one such neural net keeps increasing. And so even if there are open source models, they will, never be, they will be less and less produced by small groups of, of um, dedicated researchers and engineers, and it will only be the providence of a company. Hi. Okay. Uh, can you tell us more about the base model before you uh, lobotomized it, uh, lined it? What, what was the about question? The base model of GPT-4. What about it? How was it before you lobotomized it? Uh, we, we, we definitely realized that in the process of doing RLHF on the models, it loses important capability. We're studying how we can preserve as much of that as possible. Um, the base model is like not that easy to use. Um, but what we'd like to get to is something that does follow instructions and gives users as much control and as much capability as possible and doesn't get us in legal trouble. Although, like, you know, we've discovered a lot of stuff like refusals to help with that. So we want, we, we totally hear the request for more flexible models. Um, and we're trying to figure out how to do that and, and give users more customization.